Now, we want to start with Daniel 2, a part of the Bible that we all should be familiar with. If not, you need to be. Okay, as we know, the chapter begins when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has a dream that he can't remember, and thus he doesn't understand. Obviously, if he can't remember it, he can't understand it. Well, he gathers all the wise men and orders them to tell him the dream first and then interpret it. After all, if they can't tell him, if they can tell him a dream that he himself can't remember, then he could trust their interpretation. Of course, these are a bunch of charlatans, and they can't tell him the dream. The king gets mad, and he's going to have everybody killed, including Daniel and the three Hebrew captives. But in the end, the Lord reveals to Daniel and the interpretation, and everyone's life is spared. Okay, now, the dream, of course, as we know, if you know Daniel 2, was of a giant statue. The head was of gold, the breasts and arms were of silver, the belly and thighs were of brass, the legs were iron, and the feet part iron and part clay. That's the dream, okay, the statue. But then we come to the last part, and that's the part I want to focus especially on. All these kingdoms in Daniel 2, you got the gold and the silver, blah, 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 they come and go, and then there is this. Finally, a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on the feet of iron and clay and broke them in the pieces, and the stone became a, uh, the struck the image became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. That's Daniel 2, 34 and 35. That's how it ends. Okay, Daniel then interprets the dream for the king, telling him that the head of gold represented him, the king of Babylon, a symbol for the nation. Babylon was represented by the gold. Afterwards, another kingdom, the silver, would arise, then another, the brass, and then finally the one on the legs, the iron. The iron breaks apart, and that breaks apart into the iron and clay in the feet, into smaller powers that it says will not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Then finally, the stone, this mountain comes down and fills all the earth, and that's symbol of God's final kingdom, and it will stand forever. Now, folks, for centuries, this dream has been interpreted as follows and understood as follows, okay? Babylon, the gold head. Okay, Medo Persia, the silver in the arms and the chest, Greece, the belly and brass thighs, okay, Rome, the legs of iron and iron and clay, and then finally God's eternal kingdom, the stone cut out without hands. Now, a few points to consider when we look at Daniel 2. First of all, this is not just an SDA interpretation, far from it. Millions of Christians and Jews have interpreted this chapter this way for centuries. Get this in your head. Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, God's internal kingdom. In fact, in fact, as we go through this, all four of these kingdoms are definitely identified. Daniel comes out and names three of them for us, and with Rome and with the New Testament, the fourth one, Rome, is all but identified for us. We'll cover this more on the website later. But now, here is a key point that I want you to remember. Don't forget this, okay? We've got Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, okay? This sequence, don't forget, this sequence forms the outline for the rest of the prophecies that we're going to study. All the other prophecies are going to be based on this broad foundation. Okay, this will become clearer as we move on. Now, that's the first point. And we also come to another point that I'm going to repeat and repeat ad nauseum because once you get it down, you will save yourself from a common error that is taught almost everywhere in Christendom. Almost everywhere. Now, listen to this. Unlike the first three kingdoms, whose metals stop after their demise, you got the head of gold, you know, then you got the brass, you know, the silver stops, and then the iron, then the, then the brass, you know, the, the gold, silver, brass, and the iron. Unlike these first three kingdoms, whose metals stop after their demise, the iron of the fourth kingdom remains until the end of the world, even in the even if the feet and toes becomes mixed with miry clay. Okay, the legs of iron, its feet part of iron and part of clay. In other words, listen to this point. The iron that starts in the legs remains in the feet. And the iron stays there all the way to the end. So the point is the kingdom that began after Greece, after the brass that starts in the leg, you know, extends all the way to the end of the world. It will be there to 
the bitter end. Okay, so the point, the fourth kingdom, which arose after Greece and whose legs and toes are of iron, though changing form, extends to the end of the world. Now, this fact helps positively identify this because what world power arising after Greece, after the, the, the bronze and the belly and thighs, the iron extends all the way to the end of time. What power after Greece all the way to the end, though it changes form? Only one, and that is Rome, solely, totally, and only Rome. What other possible power arises right after ancient Greece, which ended centuries before Christ, yet extends to the end of time and beyond? Again, it could be solely, what could it be but Rome, solely, totally, and only Rome. Look at this again. Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, second coming. Now think about this for a minute. What firmer, broader, and more immutable foundation the history of the world itself could God have used to build for us such a rational edifice for faith? I mean, the world could blow up tomorrow, but there'll have always been a Babylon, always been a Medo Persia, always been a Greece, always been a Rome. I mean, if you're God and you're looking down at these people and you want to give these people on earth an immutable foundation, what more broader foundation could he give us than the history of the world? We have been given a foundation as immutable, as unchangeable as the past itself. I mean, even God can't change the past. So this is what God has given to help us ground our faith in. It's a rational faith to be sure, but it's faith. Anyway, points to remember so far, okay? You've got Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, the God's final kingdom. Okay, this sequence performs the prophetic outline for all the rest of what we're going to study. All the other prophecies are basically going to be based on this broad and firm and immutable foundation. That's the first point. Second point, this, don't forget this, this is crucial. The fourth kingdom, the iron of Rome, which comes up after Greece, extends to the end of time, though at some point it changes form. Hey, if you need to stop this seminar right now and go over this material in Daniel to do it, learn this sequence, see how Rome goes all the way to the end. Learn it so well you could teach it to others, to others all the way through this seminar. I'm going to tell you, if you've got to stop and go through this in your Bible, do it till you're perfect. You're, it's really clear. Trust me, you won't be sorry. Anyway, that's Daniel 2.